Hi, my name is Lisa Harrington. I am one of the pastors from Blue Oaks Church. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, about projects and building, and we're going to sing some songs. I have my good friend Chris Wilson here to sing with me today. Um, I, hopefully it's a, as much of a treat for you as it is for me. We're going to start by singing When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. spread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sigh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that we do when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day Rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Next, we're going to sing um, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. mind leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms what have I to dread Next, we're going to do Chris's favorite song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Is it your favorite song? Yes, it is. All right. Come thou fount of every blessing, to my heart to see thy grace. Springs of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. From to wander, Lord, I feel it. From to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Oh, that day when free from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face. Clothed in blood, washed linen, how I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry, take my ransom soul away. Send thine angels now to carry me to realms of endless day. 
Next we're going to do Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns, a music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king. Crown him the Lord of life Who triumphed o'er the grave And rose victorious in his strife For those he came to save His glories now we sing Who died and rose on high Next, we're going to do I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. We're going to sing um, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears 
book of Nehemiah. It's a written account about the rebuilding of Jerusalem's walls after the exile. And it's a story about overcoming great odds and renewal and strengthening of faith. You know, the name Nehemiah means Yahweh has comforted. Nehemiah offers hope to people in the face of discouragement. You know, he gets dire news about the condition of the wall surrounding Jerusalem. Ne- Nehemiah is not in Jerusalem, but rather he's a slave for a foreign king in Persia. I want you to pay special attention to this next sentence because it's an important theme throughout the entire book. Nehemiah prays passionately and continually. And it's worth noting that he was, a, he was a layman, not a priest or prophet, but his fasting and praying caused changes. He ended up in Jerusalem supervising the repairs of the wall. And we're left with a, a ton of lessons from the building project that are useful for us in everyday life. You know, lessons about prayer and leadership, overcoming enemies, honesty, integrity, and about trusting God. You know, a remnant, uh, a remnant's a small group of something that's left. So there's a small group of the Israelites that returned 70 years earlier, and they rebuilt the temple, but they rebuilt it without walls. So the city was vulnerable to attack. The walls were needed. They were needed for protection. Without walls, uh, the people were defenseless. God blessed his people again, right? He made a way for them to rebuild the wall, even with the odds stacked against them. You know, it gave them a sense of security and community. Nehemiah was, he was, he was grieved when he heard news of the broken wall and the burned gates. And that bad news became his call to action, a challenge to bring change that would glorify God. You know, how's God calling you to make a difference? Are you, are you willing to accept the challenge? You might be asking, well, what challenges are you talking about? I don't know. You know, start looking for the opportunities that come every day so you don't miss them. Nehemiah showed us how to pray and to listen for God's answers. He spent a long time in prayer that included fasting. You know, he praised God. He confessed the sins of the people. He trusted God's promise to Moses to restore the people. When the king asked Nehemiah what made him look sad, you know, Nehemiah said a quick prayer before responding. I mean, it was just a pattern for him. He prayed about everything. Nehemiah said his prayer was, God, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, loyal to his covenant and faithful to those who love him and obey his commands. Look at me. Listen to me. Pay attention to this prayer of your servant that I'm praying day and night in intercession for your servants, the people of Israel, confessing the sins of the people of Israel. And I'm including myself and my ancestors among those who've sinned against you. You know, God put a plan in Nehemiah's mind, put a dream, and he told the people that God's hand had been favorable to him. They had good results. The project was completed in 52 days, 52. I mean, his prayers continued throughout the whole book and they reflect his obedience to God. His heart was open to the Lord. You know, it would serve us well to check our own hearts from time to time. You know, Nehemiah prayed for four months, for four months before God answered his first prayer. He prayed confessing the sins of Israel, asking God to remember his covenant with his people, 
and asking God to grant him favor with the king. And he kept reminding the people to trust God and that God would fight for them and help them. Nehemiah believed that God would use him, and he trusted him to deal with any opposition. And when Nehemiah spoke to the people, they were inspired to join him in his work. He shared the favor the king gave and how God's hand had been with him, and that motivated the people. You know, they responded by going to work immediately. He set a goal to rebuild, and he succeeded. And each time enemies bullied them, Nehemiah prayed. He knew that God would fight for them. He stood firm. He prayed. He ignored them, and the work continued. You know, Nehemiah overcame all the opposition and the people rebuilt the wall that laid in ruins for 70 years and they did it in 52 days. And we should look at obstacles and challenges, you know, to press on and trust God. We should see that as a call to action. Nehemiah was a man of integrity. He never caved into fear. He obeyed God and he prayed. And we should live a life of integrity, you know, and that happens when we stay connected to God. After completing the wall, Nehemiah worked with Ezra, the priest, to connect the people with God. And our prayers, our prayers should include our desire to stay close, close to God, but they should also cl- include our desire to help others stay close to God too. Nehemiah understood the consequences of both holiness and turning away from God. Now, do you find comfort in this story? You know, remember what the name Nehemiah means? Yahweh has comforted. I think it's an important story, especially as we try to live abundantly in new places. Whether we're thinking about moving, getting settled into a place that's not familiar. You know, maybe we're really bothered by a roommate or neighbor or dealing with failing health. When we don't even know what's going on or how we feel about it, when we don't know what our options are or even if we have any. One thing we can always do is pray and talk to God about it. Does a project have to, be, have to be big in order to be important? It's not a trick question. It's a big fat no. I mean, sometimes waking up and making the best that you can out of that day is the project. Something as simple as saying hi to a neighbor or reaching out to someone you can see as lonely is the project. I think those projects are just as big and important as, as a building. Don't be afraid to bring your request to the Lord. He'll answer according to his will, but remember, he's able to do immeasurably more, immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. So the best we can think up, he exceeds that. Don't ever underestimate the impact just one person can have on many. And don't ever underestimate the impact you have on me. Let's pray. God, just thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much that we can um, read it and that there are examples that help us. And in the story of Nehemiah, God, you just there's just a plan. There's just an outline of what we can do that's helpful. Um, we can all pray. Um, so remind us to pray. We can pray and we can trust you and we can leave things with you and you care about us and you fight for us. And God, help us each to remember that, that we're here um, to do work that you have for us, not, not the work that you have for other people. Um, so projects are big and they're small, um, but there's no project that's too small. So even today, if it's just going out, of, going out of our way to say hi to someone or inviting them to coffee, I pray that you give us the courage and the strength to do that, um, that we would look for the projects that you put in front of us and that we would accept those challenges. Amen. All right, we're going to continue singing a few more songs. Uh, Next, we're going to do the old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. Oh, the old rugged cross, 
so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary so i'll change We're going to do uh, Because He Lives. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. And Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth. Because he lives How sweet to hold A newborn baby And feel the pride And joy he gives But greater still The calm assurance This child can Because Christ lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, because I know he holds the future, and life is worth. Now we're going to do Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, now burst on my sight, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
perfect submission All is at rest I am my Savior Am happy and blessed Watching and waiting Looking above Filled with His goodness Lost in His love this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let me pray a blessing um, over you before, before we end our time together. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace, my friends. Amen. See you next time.